Hey everybody, um, so I'm going to show you today a duct insulation script and this is the second time I'm recording this because originally when I posted it I didn't have the audio on. Uh, sometimes I record videos for a gaming YouTube channel I do and I turn off the audio and only uh, record the game sound and I forgot to turn it back on for that video. So um, here it is again, hopefully uh, this one sounds better uh, now that the sounds on so this is a duct insulation script this came about uh, it was a few years ago when I discussed this with a uh, MEP bin manager and they wanted to, to try something like this um, we never did anything with it we kinda developed something uh, but never got around to finishing it and I had it there in my backlog as a cool video to possibly do and I had a weekend to spare so I went ahead and um, worked on the script and got it to a point where it can be used. Now with that said, if this is something you actually want to use, feel free to download it. You may have to tweak it, customize and add a few things to it. This is not a fully completed script. I mostly just did this for fun, but if you want to use this, um, feel free to download it and tweak it and add whatever you want to it. And um, if you're not familiar with uh, insulation uh, and, and just how that works uh, in, in Revit, uh, we've got a duct element here if we remove the insulation. Uh, you can see that now that transparent like uh, wrap around the duct is gone, but if we click on the duct uh, if we come up here, we can add insulation uh, pretty easily. Uh, we've got two types. We can uh, edit a type and then add a, a new uh, duct wrap if we wanted to. Uh, there's also pipe insulation. And when you download this script, that's actually what uh, it's called. It's called pipe and duct insulation. So just a heads up, it doesn't do pipe. Uh, I never got to that point. Uh, nor do I think I will, but I might. I mean, it depends on if, if people want to look at that. But it's the same idea, essentially, with the, the, the duct wrap. So, or with the duct insulation. So, here's how you would add it. Uh, there's a thickness. Uh, click OK if you wanted to add it. We're going to leave it blank. I'm going to go back um, before I ran the script. So that everything... Because uh, previously, before I had that item isolated, uh, the... All of the, most all of the duct has uh, insulation. Now, there's a few things that don't have insulation, mostly because I wanted to highlight uh, why that is the case and, and show you kind of how this works. So, there's a various ways you could do this in Dynamo. You could use a UI and then based off of system types and, and different variables, you could uh, pick and choose what insulation, what thickness, and all of that. My thought, and this was a, a thought from uh, a year years ago when we were working through uh, this thing, was to have an Excel document. This uh, Excel document could also be a database, a SQL database, it could be whatever you want. Um, it's a uh, CSV, and it's got some information in it that uh, uh, pretty much says what insulation the uh, element should have. So it uses the system classification. It also uses the dimensions of the duct itself. It also uses the insulation type and then the um, uh, the thickness. Or it doesn't use these. These are the... This is the insulation uh, settings when we actually uh, associate the insulation to the object or to the duct. So uh, over here to the left we've got supply air we have the dimensions of the duct and so if both of these match in you know for that element then it will assign a duct wrap uh, at two inches uh, thickness uh, this is random I just randomly pick these values just for this experiment or this uh, script uh, you can also see there's some weird numbers here I'll show you that in a second so if we pull that over here well We'll pull it back in a second. So the way that we're working here is that we're checking for two variables. And the Excel document means that a designer can update and add new ones uh, to it. 
and the thing that they would have to match is if we clicked here on the duct, if we scroll down, we will see, oops, actually let's scroll up and we should find a size. So you'll see size dimension, uh, 14 by 14. That's what we saw in the Excel doc. That is what it's using is that parameter there. So that parameter needs to map up correctly inside the Excel. I'm not a like Excel pro. I'm looking at a CSV, but if you had an Excel with macros that was, I don't know, telling the user they had to add the inch symbol or whatever, then there may be ways to do that. Uh, there's ways to do that in a database, but and also keep in mind that there's elements like this here that have multiple sizes. So you can see 14 by 14, 12 by 14, and so on, because there's three uh, sides to it, or three three inputs. Um, and so there's three different sizes for those. There's also items like, uh, like this one that has a diameter uh, for the uh, flex duct, or for round duct that goes into it. So this size one there's you could build functionality into another tool to input that data now I simply just have a one-to-one -one care you got to make sure the characters match it's simple it's easy it's easy to maintain and that's why I did it so it also makes it easy where uh, if you know that information just put it there that way things don't have to get messy with Python I'm a I'm a fan of Python I would prefer to build it if I was going to deploy this or use it, I would prefer to have it more dynamic and, and have the ability to catch different instances and things. But this, uh, I think this way is very simple. And instead of having to look at this element here and then trying to find a bunch of the width uh, parameters like width three, width one, and so on, try to find all that data and then figure out what's what, it gets messy pretty quickly and uh, size is right there, it's very straightforward. So by using that, uh, along with the system classification, so in this case, this is a supply error, it could be exhaust or return or whatever, then uh, it will find that, uh, check the variable, does it equal supply error, does it equal 14 by 14, if that's the case, add duct wrap at two inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this script We'll see it added it. We can see that it did not add to a few other items. We can see it added here. So it did have this information inside of the Excel. Did not add this one because I did not add that. And it would require somebody to add a line. And uh, I'll just show you kind of what this would look like. Uh, shoot. So we've got the duct selected, and then we, over here, we know that's a supply error, so what we can do is do supply error, and we know that's a 14 inch, and uh, I should have grabbed one that didn't have so many dimensions in it, but 12 inch by 14 inch and then that should uh, be good and then here we can just do duct wrap and then we could do two inches I'm gonna save this CSV I'll pull it over here and then we can see now if we pull this script back over here, I'm gonna I'm just gonna unplug that and plug it back in, run it. Let's actually Okay, let's see if it pulled that data in. So we have the f uh, we have 14 by 14, 
And then this is a duct fitting. Do we, let's make sure that everything looks correct. So if we click on that again, Okay, so I brought that in. Now let's just pan over here and see what's going on with this to the right. We'll just try to fix it. These errors errors are normal. We can ignore those. Um, and I think I know what the issue is. It's Let's just go back and then run it again, brand new. And then we'll see it added it. So it was having issues with the Python script because the uh, stuff already had installation associated to it. So that's what I mean. The script isn't entirely done. There's some things that we can add to it. But essentially what this is, is it's the CSV. It's got the, um, the data in it uh, that a designer, anybody can add. And then we've got the elements we're pulling. Right now it's just ducts and duct fittings. If you wanted to add more categories, you could just uh, add them there and then it pulls those elements in. Uh, over here to the right, we pull two, uh, two parameter values from those elements. We pull the system classification, like what we saw in the Excel, along with the size, just like we saw in the Excel doc. Um, and then uh, we, uh, there's some manipulation to it to get it to look correctly, but essentially what we want to look like is this here. We're going to use these as key values so that we can map it up to the correct stuff uh, in the Excel uh, document. So we will take that information, put it together. We'll do the same thing to the Excel information. So this, this here is what you would see in Excel. So here we see supply error. Well, in this list, okay, where is it? It's there. This list, the value associated to it is the um, insulation type and the, uh, the thickness. So when this element is matched, like we can see index 24 and 9 matches, so then this key value here is going to pull out, and if we scroll down, we'll see... Uh, here it will pull out duct wrap as the insulation type and then thickness two inches right there we'll see here uh, it returns so we're essentially creating the dictionary uh, with the proper elements based off of uh, the uh, classification and name designers put in Excel and then we're just mapping that stuff up from the elements that we've got so these are 60 elements the reason why we have an error and why we can ignore it is because some of those key values don't exist we're pulling out ducts that we don't have information in the Excel for represented in there we don't have that information in there so it's saying hey there's there's nothing in it so if we pan over here to the right we can see there's actual nulls in it uh, and there's also this dictionary here. What this dictionary is doing is pulling the correct duct insulation type. The way that this is doing it is just ba based off of the name. So I've got here the duct wrap and the rigid fiber board, and those are our key values. And then our, yes, those are our keys, and then our values are our elements. And pretty much what we're passing through is what we returned out of this for each of those elements. We can see we've got duct wrap, duct wrap, so on for rigid fiber and then so on. And then we just pass that in to get a nice structured list of the correct element types per element, per duct or duct fitting. And then you can see the nulls. Again, we can ignore those because those are, those are elements that do not have information in Excel. And then over to the right, we've got our Python script. This is a very simple one. Uh, it's, it needs a catch in there to check to see if the insulation is uh, um, already assigned to the, the duct. And if it is, update it to either the correct type, uh, the thickness, or leave it alone if, if nothing is changed between the type and what it sees in Excel. Uh, it depends on your workflow too. You may not want it to work that way. So I left it like this uh, so that it could be changed or added to. 
But if you run it the first time, it updates everything. You don't have to run it again afterwards if you don't want that kind of functionality built into it. Here is the um, uh, the function. So it's just this API function here that will just call duct installation dot create, and it will. Uh, it takes in the document, which is up here. We have that defined. And then it takes in three different things. We've got our duct elements being passed through our duct installation and our installation thickness. So it takes in the duct and I d and it takes in the duct element ID. So we just do duct dot ID, duct installation dot ID, because it takes the ID for that too. And then this is just a, um, a, uh, um, a number uh, for the thickness. So also, I didn't explain this, but this condition here is checking to see if any of these are null. If they are null, um, well, and it's not if they are null, it's actually saying if they are not null, if they're not equal to none, then uh, go ahead and do this. But um, And then if they're, if they're not none, uh, do this, but if they are, don't do anything. So that's that script. Uh, if you want to check it out, it will be on my GitHub. Uh, the link is below, and uh, feel free to download it, tweak it if you want. If you have, if this is something you want to use in your projects and you're having trouble, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm glad to to help if you need it, and uh, be sure to check out the Discord too. That's a good place to ask questions. It's not a place where people are going to do things for you, but. If you want to ask questions and uh, tr you know just try to troubleshoot things together, it's a really good community, not just for Dynamo, but a lot of different things. Uh, so check that out. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.